Welcome back at the start of our show. We brought the breaking news really just two minutes before the show started with the president tweeting, I'm pleased to announce that a deal has been struck uh, with the various leaders on Capitol Hill on a two-year budget and debt ceiling. No poison pills. This was a real compromise in order to give another big victory to our great military and vets. Well, what's the fallout of this? What are the numbers and what does it mean? Let's bring in our panel. We'll start there. Chris Steyerwald is politics editor here at Fox News. Leslie Marshall, Democratic strategist, and Byron York, chief political correspondent of the Washington Examiner. Just getting all these numbers in, bottom line is that takes the debt ceiling issue past the 2020 election, which is the key thing for all of these lawmakers. Absolutely. Bottom line is a whole lot more federal spending, and you just blow a big hole in the debt ceiling, although it's actually being just uh, suspended until July 31st, 2021, 20, uh, which will be conveniently not only after there's a new president, a uh, newly elected president, uh, but also after every member of the House and a third of the Senate will have been reelected without having to worry about uh, this issue. Uh, already been texting with conservative members of the House who do not like this at all. They're giving it a D or a D minus uh, rating. And uh, actually, there are some some liberals who are uh, who are complaining about it too. So we're getting the complaints in the in the standard places. Those conservatives who still care about fiscal discipline. But that many of these days. in the campaign, as you're looking at Democrats getting ready for another debate, the president's not talking about cutting the deficit or with the debt and Democrats are definitely not talking about that so is this an issue well Capitol Hill everybody in Capitol Hill is angry but when these people go home for their break left and right to their constituents it's really a win for both Nancy Pelosi comes off as a great leader the president comes off as a great deal maker as they want to and the Democrats get what they want you have a debt limit raised you have more spending on a domestic level Republicans don't like that but the Republicans get their defense uh, increased budget for the military they like that so they both go home and yeah. say look what we gave you the government doesn't shut down and you know what you can't I think I think it was smart. Quite sure, frankly, but my kids, my this. kids don't love it because they're going to be, you know, paying the bill. But but at, at the end of the day, right now, what politicians do what they do best. They're politicizing before an election. The president can't tout, and Republicans can't tout a great, strong economy and then go, we're going to shut the government down, by the way. And even if they don't shut it down, they're going to be blamed for it because they're in power. Chris, it's hard to imagine the evolution we have here. Yeah. The last, you know, Mitt Romney, Paul Ryan campaigned in front of a debt clock in the race in 2012. Barack Obama once said about a debt ceiling increase that it was unpatriotic to have this kind of debt. Uh, we don't, calling this a government doesn't quite work because that's not really what we're doing. We have a stupid outrage politics where people spend their time being angry about tweets that accomplish nothing. And then in the end, we get the bipartisan news. You talk about your kids. We're talking about your grandkids and your great grandkids and your great great grandkids. Uh, uh, it was Madison who told us that posterity has no vote. And we are screwing over posterity in a really astonishing way with this. Another $300 billion in spending, two years of no budget cap or no uh, debt limit. This is, this is rank amateurism. You know, Congress said they wanted to go back to regular order. Yeah. This is not regular order. This is not regular order. And there, there still is plenty of room for a little drama uh, when everybody comes back. Because they have because to still hurt the cats. They do have to do that. And they've, they've said, well, we're not going to have any poison pills. We're not yeah. going to have any of these traps. But, you know, there's plenty of room for that stuff to happen. The other thing to remember is, uh, as far as the Republicans are concerned, President Trump has never been a fiscal conservative. That's just not but what he's he But he's taken does. over the party, has he not? He, he, he has. But, the, look, the party has, has been the uh, a party of fiscal conservatives in name only. Come on. Look at the spending that went through the entire George W. Bush uh, administration. This is, this is a sore spot, and it always ends up like this. I'm not going to be wa watching Mueller. The report presents very substantial evidence that the president is guilty of high crimes and misdemeanors. We had uh, no collusion, no obstruction. We had no nothing. All three of those statements are abs absolute lies. He is a essentially unindicted co-conspirator. What they're doing is just hearing after hearing after hearing. Do over of the do over the do over. Ladies and gentlemen, taxpayers, you're paying for this nonsense. Maybe I'll see a little bit of it. Maybe you'll see a little bit of it. The president in the Oval Office today back with the panel. Uh, Leslie, the Mueller hearing, uh, full coverage on Wednesday starting in the morning. Democrats are betting that people haven't read this, but they're going to see the movie, essentially. 
Oh, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble. I don't agree. I, I don't agree. I mean, when, when you look at what's polling as far as issues, this is not an issue that Democrats care about or Republicans uh, coming up with an election year. And in addition to that, what, what does it do? I, I think that we're going to see the headline, and I'm, I, hope, I hope I'm wrong, but this is a nothing burger. Again, we're going to see that because... Mueller has said he is not going to go outside the scope of this report. Let me I think interrupt there are going you, to be a lot of questions. Let me interrupt you. The DOJ has just sent this letter instructing Robert Mueller to keep his testimony to the information within his report. As he said to the reporters in that first press conference, now it is in a letter to him saying, keep your testimony to the report. So I, I don't think we're going to, you know, I think what Democrats want is to be very specific with regard to obstruction of justice and have the American people hear it if in fact they're interested enough to tune in. I'm not sure they will be. Chris? Uh, most congressional hearings devolve into the self-seeking actions of individual lawmakers who are trying to generate sound bites for themselves and that's why most of these things aren't worth a bucket of warm spit. Maybe I will be surprised this time. Maybe it will be scintillating and revealing but I think it'll probably be mostly showboating. For Democrats, you know, they're going to go down the, the report and the details of it and he's probably going to refer to page whatever. For Republicans, there are open that were not covered in the report or that he did not touch on that they may ask about. Absolutely. What, what about the dossier? You interviewed uh, Christopher Steele. There's, there's a lot of questions about the origins of the investigation. Uh, what about George Papadopoulos and this mysterious guy, Mifsud? I mean, there's tons of things they could get into if they wanted. Now, if, if the, the Mueller really follows this, this directive from the Justice Department about staying within you know, the black and white uh, page of his, his report, then he, he's really not going to talk about it. And we all know, at least we think we know, that the first question in this is going to be, uh, would you have indicted the president but for the Office of Legal Counsel finding? And how is he going to answer that is probably well, the biggest... didn't do any other indictments when it came to obstruction. I mean, if... Absolutely. There weren't, weren't any other indictments when it came to conspiracy. He did not allege that there was a conspiracy to obstruct justice. And there were others who were discussed in the report that if he had wanted to indict them for obstructing justice, there would have been no prohibition on uh, indicting a private person. Uh, and then he could, the president could have been an unindicted co-conspirator. But that didn't happen. The biggest part, though is what Russia did do mm -hmm. and what Russia attempted to do and what the U.S. is doing to prevent that from happening again. And honestly, that is what I think the American people would care most about, uh, left or right. And Democrats and Republicans can score some points, because obviously there's going to be a lot of grandstanding, especially for people that are running for office to be president on the Democratic side. And, and those may be answers that we can get. But again, I'm not sure, because he is going to stay completely within the lines on all those questions, whether it be Russia, obstruction of justice, uh, the, the dossier. I'm not sure that either side is going to get the answers that they they seek uh, to get those uh, headlines. It is worth watching because I'm anchoring with Martin yeah, McCallum I, I and a panel. But it's a great and, bucket. Really it's, good a great TV. bucket. <laughs> it's a great bucket of warm spit. It's my favorite. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love. Great teasing for the program. <laughs> panel, thank you very much.